guys, so for today's video, we are going to be looking at my Viseart eyeshadow collection. And the impetus for this video is actually that Viseart released their own sort of refillable magnetic palette. Uh, so I have depotted some of my Viseart shadows in the past just using uh, Z palettes. This is a uh, Sephora branded Z palette. I'm not sure if they still sell this or not. Uh, this is just one of the little Z palettes. I think Z palettes still selling things. So this has all of the Theory palettes that I have. And this one has a couple of the Petite Pro. And I think as I've said before, I really like it when the magnetic palette reflects or is from the brand that the shadows are. So for example, I bought this Anastasia Beverly Hills palette. It has Anastasia shadows in it. And then I also have this um, very large Sydney Grace palette, which is great. This one actually has a mirror in it as well. So some Sydney Grace shadows in there. So uh, I find that it just it helps me identify what the shadows are. So it's a little bit easier to know what I'm looking for. And it just appeals to me to kind of have it that way. So I was really excited when Viseart announced, I think on their Instagram, or it might've been, I think Anastasia Sparrow is her name, the founder of Viseart. Uh, they announced that they were going to be putting out a palette like this and they showed a picture of it and everything. Uh, I think that was quite a while ago and it just recently launched on the Viseart uh, website. So I was kind of checking periodically on their website and on uh, some other retailers where they sell their, their items. Uh, and so they finally released this. So I was very excited that they did that. Uh, this only comes in one size and this was $20 on the Viseart website, but I paid 16 uh, because I think when Viseart was redoing their website, uh, they offered anyone a pro discount, essentially, if they emailed them and uh, requested one. So uh, I did want to mention now that they just posted, I think yesterday on their Instagram, they're going to be extending the same opportunity to anyone who wants to be a pro member, which gets you 20% uh, off at Viseart. Uh, so you would email pro at viseartparis.com. Uh, and they will get you signed up for a pro account that will get you 20% off. So I will link this uh, Instagram post down below. Okay, so I think I'll start off by kind of talking a little bit about uh, the palette. And I'm not sure that I will be able to fit all of my kind of depotable uh, Viseart shades into this palette. It's not the biggest, as you just saw that Sydney Grace one is quite large. But for some people, this may be a better size because it's more travel friendly, that sort of thing. So uh, it has a really nice kind of, I think, dark brown and rose gold metallic. And it says Viseart. Then it has their little ribbon, like a lot of their palettes. And I think this is supposed to be... Uh, I think you're supposed to be able to kind of prop these up somehow. I, I never really did much with those. Uh, it has a mirror and then it has a plastic sheet, which you could tear off if you wanted. If you wanted to kind of keep your shadows a little bit more protected, you could leave it on. And I guess I will peel off that plastic. Uh, I think I'll leave, I guess maybe the plastic on the mirror just for now. And I did get out my measuring tape. I think the dimensions are on the website, but just for the sake of this video, it's a little under seven inches by, I'd say five inches. And it's a pretty uh, shallow pan here. So if you wanted to purchase this and put maybe like domed shadows or something, I'm not sure that it would be deep enough for that. Uh, and again, just to kind of demo the size, uh, I think this is an iPhone Max. It, it's the larger iPhone, I don't know, I'll, I'll put which iPhone I have down below if you would find that uh, helpful, but just to kind of give you an idea of the size. Okay, so that is this uh, palette that we will bring out in a little bit. 
Uh, so I thought I would just kind of take a trip down memory lane here and show you some of the uh, different Viseart palettes that I've bought over the years. I think I managed to get all of them, but some of these are quite small, so they, they have a tendency to kind of get a little lost, uh, which is another reason to have it in one kind of grab-and-go palette, so you're not rooting around for these little palettes. Uh, so this is my original Viseart 01 Neutral Matte palette. I did own, I think it was the Bridal, was it? oh, it was the Paris Nudes palette, that one. I think I got rid of that one. I think I sold that to like Glambot or something. And this is a great basic palette. It's a great to uh, round out other palettes in your collection if you just need some neutral mattes to kind of finish off a look, provide some uh, transition colors, um, blending out colors, that sort of thing. You can even deepen up with you know some of these shades. So really great uh, palette. And this is the original, or at least one of the earlier packaging designs where you can't pop out the pans. Uh, I'm sure you could depot them if you really wanted to, but it's not designed to do that. Their more recent packaging is designed so that you can sort of easily remove the uh, shades. And I did repurchase this palette recently from the Boxy uh, pop-up store. Uh, you can see here, uh, if you don't want to sign up for a pro account or uh, you miss the opportunity or whatever, um, this promo code for 20% off Viseart Paris, um, it looks like it's like a charm 20. So they actually printed this box, I think, especially for putting into boxy charms, which is interesting. Oh, and it has it down here too. So anyway, so looking at the pop-up store, you can see the difference in the back there. They've made it so this is actually kind of part of the plastic instead of a sticker. Uh, but I thought when I was purchasing this, you can also see the uh, brand is now printed on the front. So looking at the BoxyCharm website, I thought this was actually the newer style of packaging where they have little kind of divots that you can pop the shades out, but unfortunately it is not. Uh, this wasn't very expensive though. I think it was, I don't know, maybe $12. I mean, these normal retail are like 80, I think. So it's not the, the worst thing in the world. Yeah, I think I paid $9. So really, I can't complain too much. So I have a slightly fresher palette, I guess is the, the moral of the story there. Uh, and I also did get the Neutral Matte Milieu, I think. Uh, so same story with this one. It's the older style of packaging. Uh, I haven't played with this one. It's a new palette to my collection, but I do recall, I think Mandy Davis MUA saying that this was one of her favorites. So again, I think this was like $9. So I thought I would go ahead and pick that up. And I guess on the topic of BoxyCharm, I did also get their eyeshadow primer, which this also has like the special discount code on here. Uh, I've noticed that a lot lately with BoxyCharm. I don't know if any of you are subscribed uh, to BoxyCharm, but uh, it seems more and more that they are packaging things especially for BoxyCharm. Uh, so this is the primer, and I haven't tried this. Okay. It looks like it's kind of like translucent, transparent. Feels very kind of silicone-y. So it doesn't have any color or anything, but yeah, I haven't tried that yet, but again, I think that was like $6, so I thought I would give it a try. Okay, so these I think were some of the earliest, or at least the original neutral mattes was one of the uh, earliest Viseart palettes um, I purchased, and I don't know if those were the uh, earliest they made. Uh, so going back to the Theory uh, palettes, which I think they may be discontinuing. So uh, these are all the shades kind of depotted. Uh, let's see here. So these are the, the boxes and the packaging. Uh, they have kind of changed a little bit over time and I think they might be discontinuing these. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, it looks like they may be kind of going towards 
like a more uniform pan size. I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, uh, this is the box or the palette for the Theory 4 Amethyst, which is in this corner here. And uh, this is kind of what I was saying with those divots. Like you can see how you can just pop a pan out. And this is just, I don't know, plastic and uh, no mirror or anything like that. Uh, this was the Theory 2 Minx, which I think is this one right here, the more warm one. This one did have a mirror. And you can see like, the size of the little chair logo changed. This just has a V, this has Theory. Uh, the color of the label looks like it changed. This one has everything in French. They both do, actually. So similar label on the back. Uh, this one is Theory 5 Nuance. And for some of these, I guess I kept the outer box. So it was just kind of like a little sleeve. And I think this is very similar to the Minx packaging. Again, has a mirror. Uh, the Nuance, I think, is this palette here. I'm not entirely sure what these little guys are, by the way. I think this might have been, okay, so this was a sample Viseart shade. This was Viseart Champs-Élysées. Uh, I think um, this was from the Paris Nudes palette that I decluttered, maybe. Uh, this one is a Natasha Denona shade that I think was a sample. I think these are all Natasha Denona, actually. Oops. Yeah, these were all Natasha Denona. So, put these back in the corner there. Uh, so this one is the Theory 3 Chroma, which again has the older, I'm assuming it's older, packaging. Uh, this is Chroma right here. And then finally, the one that I've probably used the most, although you wouldn't guess from this palette because I think Ipsy or someone was doing some flash sales where they would sell two of these together. Uh, and then I also got some through like being on sale at Sephora, like they've gone on sale at various points. So this is the same as this up here. I just happen to have another one. I keep this like in my travel bag since I do have a duplicate. So this is kind of a nice kind of everyday type palette. And then this is what that packaging looks like. Okay, so those are all the Theory palettes. Uh, let's talk about the Petite Pros. Okay, so I just kept one of these out for comparison. Uh, so you can see, at least early on, they were the same kind of dark brown, black type um, package. And they started off just naming them like one, two, three, I think. So this is one and this is three and has a little mirror and the same type of um, packaging style. So that is kind of the side by side. So I think this one here is one and this is three. And uh, let's take out a pan from, before we actually like really deep pan things, I just wanted to show you this pen, I guess you would call it. Uh, this is actually designed to like hold hearing aid batteries. Like it has a little magnet on the tip there. So I saw on the Lethal Cosmetics website that they were using this to fill their palettes. I'm not sure if this is authentic. The I think the brand they had was Rayovac, which it doesn't have any sort of branding on this. I just bought it from Amazon and I paid way too much, but you know how Amazon is sometimes. Uh, compared to what they were going for on other websites, but it doesn't it doesn't quite pick things up. So I'm not sure if this is authentic. <laughs> uh, I did actually purchase another one of the Rayovac pen magnet things from I think it was a hearing aid website or it was I don't know just the picture they had actually had like the package, uh, and of course I paid like a third the price with free shipping. I just 
I wanted to film this video this weekend. I didn't want to wait. So I paid for um, the item on Amazon to get the prime shipping. But uh, anyway, I'll let you know if that turns out to be stronger because this doesn't really do what I want it to. Uh, I do also have this little like Inglot magnet, which uh, if you've ever seen the, I don't know if Inglot has changed their packaging, but uh, this is a much stronger uh, magnet. So if oof, there's always casualties when you depot, but uh, if you did need something like this, I don't know if they still sell that. I'll try to look at their website, but anyway, uh, I just wanted to show you some of these shades. So you can see, yeah, I'm getting shadow on my mat here. Um, so this was the like sample that I got. This is the little Petite Pro pan. And then that is the uh, Theory size. So I kind of kept, when I depotted these, I kept them in the same like composition as the palettes were, just because I wanted to easily put it back into the packaging if I so chose. Um, that's just what I decided to do with that. So uh, anyway, that's kind of the difference in pan size. This doesn't really count, but uh, those two together. Uh, and then I have this Petite Pro. This is the Petite Pro 4 Africa Teen. Uh, I don't know if this is the first one where they changed the color of the packaging or not. It does make it a lot easier to identify, but I think there's still a benefit to having everything kind of laid out in a palette. Uh, and I also started to kind of cut out the, the back of the box where it has all the shade names. So I just kind of keep that tucked in there. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with the Viseart. I suppose I could just, um, I don't know keep it inside the lid. Uh, so yeah, so this is the Petite Pro 3. You can see it has those green shades. And this is the Petite Pro 1. So that's something I like to do anyway. Uh, I really like this packaging. This is the uh, Midsummer, and it has this metallic font. And I really like the font that they went with, very kind of Shakespearean. Uh, I think this palette I did a brush swatch video on. So I'll link that for you guys if you are interested in seeing that. But very cute little package there. And I don't know if you can tell, the shades in the form factor are the same. They're just kind of different colors. Okay, so let's talk about these guys. So I have two of these edit palettes, I think. Okay, so I have the Rosé Edit, which again, I don't think I've ever actually used this one, which again is another reason to put them into a palette, and I'm pretty sure these are the same pan size. So this one still has like the plastic cover on. I did cut it out. And I got the Paris Edit, which again has the metallic. Again, not sure which order. This one I think also has the Champs-Élysées um, shade in it. So I wanna say this was originally in the Paris Nudes, but who knows. Okay, so again, just a comparison. You can see basically the same width. The Edit palettes are a little bit bigger or taller, I guess. And then the Theory palette looks like that. Okay, and I guess I'll take a turn into the, uh, what are these called? I don't know if these had a certain name to them. This is the Golden Hour palette, which um, has more of a metallic brushed gold finish to it. Uh, I don't love this packaging. I mean, I like the metal. I think that looks really nice. And it's kind of like engraved into it. I think, 
again, I have no concept of when uh, different palettes were released, but I know like with the neutral mattes, the idea was they would have all matte palettes and all shimmer palettes. And so for professionals, um, they wanted to make sure that if a professional makeup artist wanted an all matte look, uh, there wouldn't be any like stray shimmer particles in the palette um, that would show up on camera or on film or whatever they were doing. So uh, that's why they kind of differentiated between the all mattes and the all shimmers. Uh, when they started to make more sort of consumer driven palettes that had a mix of mattes and shimmers, uh, they started to play around I think more with the, the form factor. Uh, so this one, um, the Golden Hour palette has a nice big mirror that will stay upright. For some reason they did this kind of like plastic overleaf with the names. Uh, so this is all like Paris themed names, which I thought was really fun. Um, haven't gotten a ton of use out of this, but again, kind of have a love-hate relationship with the packaging. Uh, this is the Trist palette, which is more kind of romantic. Uh, these don't, this plastic is, of coming out like I understand the benefit I guess to having a plastic overleaf but and it is removable but I don't know it makes it a little bit more difficult to say what the name of the shade is or whatever uh, so yeah and these aren't removable so these will be staying in their original packaging so then another recent palette that they've come out with is the petite four so I think these came out, I think I purchased these like on Black Friday. So they came out, I think sometime around November. So I purchased all four. And again, uh, the outer packaging I thought was really cute and how it's, you know, it's easy to grab too. Uh, and then the, the shade of the outer palette is um, different. So if you did have multiples of these in a drawer or something, you could probably grab the one that you wanted pretty easily. Uh, and that is what that looks like, the same kind of well that you can pull out. And I guess I'll just lift this one out for size comparison. Uh, so this is the um, praline or praline, and you can see it has the shade names on the back, which is another reason to keep it and they slide in and out pretty easily. Uh, this is the Lilas or Lilas palette. Really like the gray packaging on this one. And I don't think I've touched this one yet, so it still has the plastic on it. And then this one is Chocolat. Again, see I, I buy these and then I put them in a drawer and I don't reach for them. Uh, this is the Fram, is it Framboise? like raspberry. So I thought, you know, if you have, like you could easily make a look with this, but then you're kind of limited to this color combination. So if you have all of them together, it's a little easier to kind of mix and play with them is my thinking. Okay, so again, that was a sample. So, so you can see right here we are dealing with, and this is like a metal spatula that sometimes is helpful with depotting. Uh, so this is the Petite Pro, this is the Theory, and that is the uh, Petite Four. So definitely a different pan size. And this has a net weight of six grams. I think, well, okay, we'll go ahead and get into the next one then. Uh, so this is my most recent purchase, the Paris Love Letter palette. And another trick here I like to do is take a spatula and to avoid ripping the box. Um, they just came out with these styles of palettes. These are the Etendu, I think. Um, doesn't say on the box, but like we can compare this to the edit size, like so. And this is the Petite Pro. And 
and this is a theory palette so I think this is the first of the like attendu palettes that I've bought and I just bought this with the the larger palette that I'm going to be filling uh, partly because uh, Viseart has free shipping on $50 and I don't know I just thought I'd go for it okay so that is what this packaging looks like has a mirror has six 12 pans yeah so that one has a mirror this one has also 12 pans but they're smaller they're like I think the petite pro size so now we are getting into this size and uh, let's pull out this one I don't think it's really necessary to use a tool like this but okay so just lifts out like that one of the pet peeves I have which you can see why like with some of those other um, shades I just take like a sharpie pen and mark on the back what the the brand and the shade name is uh, when you start getting into like different palettes and everything it's a little hard to kind of fit all that on uh, but let's see so this is the same as the petite four pretty sure and I think correct me if I'm wrong but I think they also changed the size of the palettes in the uh, Grand Pro uh, that they just re-released so that they match this size so in theory you could kind of interchange them and put them in you know you could take all of these out and put whatever 12 you wanted in uh, so I think that is kind of an interesting way that they're doing it because otherwise you can see we have four different uh, pants or three different pan sizes rather uh, this theory size they may be discontinuing I'm not sure if they're making this anymore the petite pro but you have you know these edits I guess it's like three kind of different palette sizes which some of them may be discontinued I'm not sure but it's just it's interesting to me uh, because with a lot of brands like you know you buy all the Urban Decay Naked palettes they're the same kind of basic shape and size but you can't depot them I think a lot of the Anastasia palettes are kind of the same shape and size but you can't depot those I'm trying to think of other brands yeah I guess Natasha Denona's like they have a few different sizes uh, and you can depot those. I don't know if they're original, like if Natasha did on his original foam packaging, if you can depot those or if it's only the more plastic. Anyway, uh, it's interesting to me the, the changes in packaging and the kind of history and evolution of a brand. Okay, so that is my collection. And I have to think about how I want to do this now. So I think you can probably guess with the number of shades I have that I'm not going to be able to fit everything. I might end up ripping this plastic off. It's kind of annoying. Uh, although this lid does kind of fit over it. Uh, and it might just be the sort of thing where I kind of have to cycle in and out. So I guess I'll keep the Petite Pros in there for now. Let's see, this little bronze shade came from the Praline, I think. Yeah. All right, so I'll just pop that back in for the time being. And then this Paris Love Letter. I'll pop that one in for the time being. I think I want to keep the palettes kind of together. So if I had to pop one shade, I think I'll probably depot all of them from that palette. That's just my preference and how I like to kind of keep things somewhat organized. So, I have to think about this. I guess I don't have to do all of them. I might speed this up 
also. So it is, I guess the second week of March, first, almost second week of March as I'm filming this. So I might kind of depot things accordingly to fit the season. All right, so I definitely know these aren't going anywhere. These aren't going anywhere. So I will probably cut this out as well. You kind of have to trim it a bit so it fits inside of one of these, uh, but I'll probably do that as well. I wish they would just, I don't know where they would print it. I don't know, maybe just put it here, I don't know. I'd, the mirrors in these palettes aren't like tremendously helpful to me. So let's see what we have here. Uh, I think I'm going to hold off on this. Maybe I'll uh, kind of rotate this in for the summer. But I think I want to use some of these the cooler tones right now. Uh, again, I think I'll hold off on that one for now. This one's actually a little bit more neutral. You just don't want to stay open. Okay, so this is going to be an interesting experiment. I think they say how many shadows from different pan sizes will fit but I'm not really sure this says net weight eight grams so I guess each one is one gram okay I think I'll start off by putting the Paris uh, what is this called Paris edit palette sort of up here Trying to make it so you can actually see. Okay, that might be the best I can do here. I really love watching um, like Hannah Louise Poston and uh, Lauren May makeup, I think. Uh, they both do Kind of depotting or kind of making new palettes or duping palettes out of like their existing singles. So I always find that interesting to watch. I feel like I don't have quite the same <laughs> level of freedom as they do when it comes to just kind of putting things from various palettes into their magnetic palette. I like to kind of keep things a little bit more organized. You can call me OCD if you want. <laughs> okay. I wonder if I could, now that I'm thinking about this, I wonder if I could take like a wet erase marker and like write, I don't think I could write the individual shade names, but maybe I could just write over it what palette it is. That might be an idea. Find some benefit for that plastic after all. Okay, so that is one little edit palette. I think I'm gonna do the rosé edit here. Where's my ink lot? <laughs> See how strong that was? Yeah, I was kind of disappointed in that pen because if you ever go to the Lethal Cosmetics Instagram, it's quite kind of hypnotic watching how they fill palettes using something like that. And I have to believe that what I got was just a, like a knockoff because the magnet doesn't seem strong enough. I don't have any uh, hearing aid batteries to kind of test out if it's strong enough for those, which is the intended purpose. Okay. 
You can see I'm leaving a little bit of a gap there just to kind of differentiate. I do wonder if I It doesn't quite fit. You can see if I do kind of sandwich them or squeeze them together, they don't. So I could just really, oops. All right, so I grabbed a uh, wet erase marker to test out my theory. Oops, very nervous when it comes to, okay. So let's see, it probably would be better to do this not on top of the pans, but I'll just try to have a light touch. Okay, Paris edit and then Rosé edit. I'm not sure how how well it'll stay on there. Just took off the mirror cover to, you know, try to avoid any rubbing or anything. Uh, but I thought it was worth a try. Okay. So I kind of want to put this in, but I also want to put in some of these other ones. So, let's do the Paris Love Letter. I think that's a good springy type color. So, it might, it might fit across. Let's see if we can do that. Just a little harder. I guess they're square pans, so I can come at it from a different angle. Um, yeah, I think those are good. Let me know if anyone has tried this palette out. I haven't yet. I feel like I've seen kind of some mixed reviews. Okay, so can definitely fit two of these. I think I'll hold off on this one until later in the summer. Okay. I wonder if I can fit this one and that one. Maybe if I put this one in a row, might work. All right, let's try that. In fact, how many are there, four? Just use my kind of spatula as a rough guide. Uh, so that's about three. Mm, I don't think you could fit three. Pretty sure you could fit two. Yeah. 
just curious here. Yeah, so that definitely doesn't fit. Okay, so this Midsummer palette was a bit of a challenge. I don't know if that's because I like pressed down on the pans to swatch them, uh, but some of these were a little bit of an effort to get out. Okay, so this one is, oops. The angle of the, uh, writing is going to be off, but that's okay. This one is... Okay, so I think I think that's a decent amount of shadows to get in here. So we got basically... Um, is it 16? Of the new kind of a tendu slash petit for um, palette size, pan size, and then we got uh, 12, 24, 32, my math is correct, um, of the like Petit Pro size. So let's see, this is Midsummer, Rosé, Paris, Okay, so this isn't going to be the most, I mean, you're not saving like a ton of space. I mean, arguably this is kind of more awkward than this. And of course you can see everything at a glance. Uh, but for spring, I think this is a nice kind of mix of some light, like peach, apricot tones, some pastels. Uh, some warmer and some cooler shades or some neutrals in here that I can pull from uh, and I'll probably I guess redo this in the summer when I'm interested in some more kind of bronzier type looks so I'm not sure if this is dried it feels dry yeah all right so let's just close that All right, uh, so that's gonna do it guys. I hope you found this interesting uh, and maybe gave you some ideas for organizing your own Viseart shadows. Uh, like I said, I will cut this out and um, keep all of the empty boxes, of course, if I decide to um, change them out. Uh, so yeah, that's gonna do it. If you're interested in videos like this or hauls or unboxings or anything really that you see on YouTube, uh, I do a variety of different videos here on my channel. So uh, please do subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope you guys are all staying very safe and healthy out there and I will talk to you soon. Bye. <music>